So, uh, if you're a basketball guy like I am, uh, you know that you know this comparison sparks more and more controversy between basketball and sports fans every year. Um, and I'm going to tell you today about why there isn't really much of a comparison to be made. And uh, this right here is why a lot of people compare is, is they, they go based upon stats. And uh, so here's Michael Jordan's career stats. Um, you know, obviously they're pretty high, pretty, pretty good stats there. And then here's LeBron's, you know, pretty similar. Um, but the reason I don't like the stat comparison is because, uh, for one, uh, LeBron made it to the league when he was 18 years old, which is, which is awesome. That's, that's, you know, amazing. Uh, Michael Jordan played 15 years in the NBA, but LeBron's still going, and uh, his game is based, you know, you know, solely upon athleticism. I'm not saying that he's not skilled at all, but uh, you know, once his athleticism dis deteriorates, then he's, you know, his stats are going to go down a little bit. Um, so, and it's, you know, not based solely upon stats. That's why I don't like the stat comparison. And uh, so, you know, I've got, you know, three more things that I like to compare. Uh, and those three things are going to be NBA titles. Sorry if I have any LeBron fans in here, you're going to hate me by the end of this speech. Um, but I had to go there. So NBA titles, um, teammates, and will to win. So I'll start with the, their NBA Finals appearances. So here's Michael Jordan's here uh, on, on this side. So he uh, played for the Chicago Bulls, obviously, went to the NBA Finals from 91 to 93. And he won all three of those and won Finals MVP in all three of those. And then he went to go play baseball for two years and wasn't very good at that. So he came back to basketball uh, in 96. And they went again three times uh, from 96 to 98. And he won Finals MVP all three times again. Uh, so And then LeBron has five, has five appearances in the NBA Finals. And he lost his first two and then... Unfortunately, he won his first against our Thunder. I know it makes me cringe every single time. Uh, then, then he won the second, you know, the next one after that. So he won the kind of the two in between there, and then he lost last year. So, you know, my argument there is uh, six for six compared to uh, two out of five. You know, you do the math there. Uh, you know, Michael Jordan was at his best in the NBA Finals. These are all stats here in each Finals, by the way. It goes points, assists, and rebounds. Um, so, you know. That's my argument there, and then, um, you know, I thought that was kind of, kind of necessary to put in there. That's Jordan with the six NBA championship rings. Um, so and then, you know, to make it to the NBA Finals, you have to have a good supporting cast, and that's where teammates come in. And here's uh, Michael Jordan with his two probably best teammates he ever had, which was Scottie Pippen and uh, Dennis Rodman. So, Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan are widely considered the greatest duo in NBA history. Um, you know, here's Scottie Pippen's career numbers. He was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame in 2010, and, uh, you know, obviously those are some pretty solid numbers as well. Um, but, you know, a lot of people want to argue that uh, Scottie Pippen wouldn't be the player he was without Michael Jordan. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of agree with that. He was still a good player when Jordan went to go play baseball. He was the best player on the team. Uh, but he, you know, didn't lead the team like Michael Jordan did. He wasn't really the same player. Michael Jordan made everybody on his team better. So there's Scottie Pippen, and then you have Dennis Rodman, and here's his career numbers. Uh, Dennis Rodman really wasn't, you know, he was kind of a hustle player. Uh, Two-time Defensive Player of the Year, uh, inducted to the NBA Hall of Fame 2011, and 13 rebounds a game is, you know, outrageous. That's crazy. Uh, so, you know, rebounds and defense are really hustle stats. He wasn't a great offensive player, but he, he was a hustle player. So, you know, there's Michael Jordan's teammates, and then you have LeBron's teammates. Uh, you know, you've got LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, and if you watch basketball, you know, I mean, you might know that these guys at one point were arguably the best at their position in the world. Um, so, you know, here's Dwayne Wade. He was, he's a nine-time NBA All-Star, 2006 Finals MVP, so he had proven that he could carry a team. Um, already, and you know, there's some of his career numbers there. Um, and then you have Chris Bosh, he's an eight time NBA All Star, and he also has pretty solid numbers as well. So, um, obviously, these guys are, uh, you know, their numbers are higher, you know, offensively than the other guys were. And like I said, I don't really like the stat comparison, but these ones are pretty, you know, pretty substantial differences uh, between those the teammates. Um, 
you know, my argument here is that LeBron James damaged his legacy by joining two other superstars, and Michael Jordan never would have done that. Uh, he wanted to beat all the other superstars to prove he was the best, and he did. So, you know, and being the greatest isn't just about ring stats and, uh, you know, teammates. It's also about a player's will to win, and that's, uh, you know, what I'm getting to here. And this, I feel like, demonstrates it the best. Uh, Michael Jordan had the flu in the NBA Finals in one game, and he still played and played like his normal self. He had 38 points and made the game-winning shot. Uh, so here's a little video to demonstrate that. We had to help him in the locker room. It may be a believer. Not luck. Or faith. You can see how exhausted Michael Jordan is. But will do it. You win. you'd ever see LeBron playing, you know, with the flu. He kind of has been carried off for like a sore ankle or whatever before, you know, uh, you know, and in cramps. But and I can vouch for him there because those really do hurt. But um, I thought this was kind of funny. LeBron kind of disappears in the fourth quarter at times and, you know, has the referee asking him, hey, do you want to sit down? Because that's basically all you do anyways in the fourth quarter. Um, but, you know, like I said, uh, Jordan's will to win was greater because he never, you know, he didn't want to sit out even though he had the flu and he still played a great game. And I don't see, think you'd see LeBron doing that. And lastly, uh, I don't think uh, LeBron saved the Looney Tunes from an alien race. Uh, so, you know, when he, when he does something like that, come talk to me. So that's my speech on LeBron and Jordan there. Have you ever been to the basketball?